Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, after a week of basically brutal churning and uh, sector uh, moving in and out all week, we ended the week very much where we started it at 77 on the wrist dial. Um, things are uh, very stationary. We had a very small dip in between in the middle of the week, but that did not prove conclusive as I didn't think it would. Uh, basically what is going on is that the various indices are at very different points and the market just cannot go down while they are in such different stages. Everything needs to align for the market to go down and I don't think we're anywhere near that stage. That means that for the next foreseeable future, for the next several weeks, we are likely to basically grind. Um, you know, overall prices might be higher, but it will be a grind and they will be very close to where they are now. We can actually look at what's happened this quarter and we will see very much the same picture in most of them. Uh, in most of the sectors and really the only one that uh, has diverged is technology and that's because of the uh, that's because of the yield curve uh, we will have a close uh, a close here in the monthlies uh, very much uh, similar to what we had uh, in the first two months and that tells me that the trend is still one of sideways to higher as opposed to anything else that we can expect for next quarter. What is the yield curve doing? Well in fact it's stabilizing in all the sectors which are important which is the 530s. If we look at that it's just not going through 154 it's stabilizing at this very very important level. Um, you know, what can I say? It, the Fed is keeping things under control. And um, while that is the situation, um, nothing much in the equity valuation space can take place. Now, the uh, path of least resistance and the danger is still down, but I'm hoping that actually the 530s turn up and break the 140 level and start trading, you know, doing a period like this between uh, 110 basis points and 154 basis points. I think that would help equities a lot and it would definitely help uh, technology a lot. The thing that I think is telling is that the 10s, 30s has stopped steepening. Now, I could never understand, and I've been long of 10s, 30s for a long, uh, you know, since down here, got stopped a couple of times back in. I could never understand what people were looking for uh, in the 10s, 30s, because uh, unless we're going to get runaway inflation that the Fed cannot control, 10s, 30s are very steep. And the fact that they are stabilizing uh, actually gives me hope that uh, the 530s can hold in and trade better as I showed you and the, all the pressure will now start pivoting onto the 5s and 10s as opposed to the 30s. The 30s have done a lot and we will now go and have a look at each individual tenure in the yield curve. The 30s actually closed the week very much where they started it. Uh, only a couple of basis points off. But it's the one that's actually achieved all its targets. Um, as I said, we are very likely in TLT to do uh, something like this, basically trade between 132 and the low 140s, 141, 142, that kind of area. And that's the kind of churning in the 30 years that would allow the tens and fives to catch up with it. Things in the, this is now the 10 year note uh, in terms of yield. I still think that we trade the, uh, here, the 185 basis points area. I, I, 
I am bearish for the fives and tens, and I am neutral for the thirties. Um, I think the uh, the bond market trades in waves. First of all, you get the panic about inflation. Everybody sells thirties, then people start actually thinking, how is that going to be achieved? That the and what the yield curve should look like and then they sell different uh, sectors in waves and I think it's now time for the fives and tens to take uh, to take the brunt of it and for the thirties probably to trade all the way up to two uh, to you know to 200 basis points um, I really don't see that this kind of steepness in the yield curve unless we get some very interesting news out of the infrastructure package can actually be sustained. Uh, if we look at the fives, I think a lot of pressure, there's a lot of room for pressure to come here and to take us all the way to uh, 116 basis points. Um, I really do not like the fives and ten area. Uh, I think the thirties have done enough. They're not going to rally a lot with, with fives and tens, but I think that fives and tens you can easily short every time it rallies uh, because I really think that, that we're going to go much higher in the fives and a little higher in the tens. While most of the pressure will be in the States, even Europe does not look that wonderful to me. Um, European yields are going to be much better controlled than uh, US yields. Let's face it, the growth is in the States. Let's face it, the uh, infrastructure package, the deficits, everything is in the States. So it's natural that the uh, spread between Europe and the States is going out. We have a much more proactive uh, ECB that wants to keep yields lower. And yet, whenever I look at a chart of the uh, Bund and the Bobble, and this is the Bobble, I can't help thinking that it's going to go in this direction, back up to at least this uh, 61 basis points in the Bobble. The Bobble looks definitely better than the Bund, and this is the Bund. The Bund is respecting levels. I mean, this line has been here, as you know, for months and we touched it and we bounced straight off it. Um, when will we know that Europe is ready to fall apart in terms of yields? Well, 17. 17 basis points is basically the level. When we go, when we close through 17, the world is ending. Uh, sorry, that's minus 17, of course. <clears throat> I don't think it's gonna happen for a long while. I think for a while, Bunds are stuck between this uh, what is it, 38, minus 38, and minus 22, I'd be shocked if the ECB didn't, um, did not intervene a hell of a lot to stop it going through. But you can see that even the sectors, the, even the, the part of the, um, the whole thing, the, the yield uh, mechanism in the world that should be at its best, and that is Germany, um, is looking a little bit uh, like it's gonna, you know, it's gonna do something to the upside, and therefore I cannot be but bearish for fives and tens in the U.S. I've been wrong on the dollar all week. Fortunately, it didn't cost me very much. It does look like it's beginning to penetrate the uh, resistance level, 92.62. We closed above it, 93.4 we haven't touched yet. I am bearish on the dollar, not because I don't think interest rate differentials between the US and, uh, and Europe will go out. I do believe they're going out. Uh, it's just that I don't see that that should really matter um, because, you know, it, it, it does obviously matter, but I, I think that they need to keep the dollar lower in order to attract funding humongous deficits and we'll see what the dollar does on Wednesday when they are more likely than not to introduce a, um, a package, an infrastructure package
language in the US uh, on top of everything else. I think the growth in the next several quarters is obviously going to be uh, spectacular. Uh, and that could be the relief that uh, the dollar is feeling at the moment. I, I still think at some stage this year it falls apart, but obviously this is not the right timing. And I have to respect things as they are, as opposed to the way I would wish them to be. It's difficult to see that the dollar is going to fall apart now simply because it had every chance on Thursday and Friday and it didn't take them. Uh, that suggests to me that we will most probably uh, at some stage next week actually bust through 93.14 and then we are in a, in a volatile area, in, in an expansion area, probably all the way back up towards uh, these moving averages between 94 and 95. If we look on a daily um, on a daily chart here, you will see that 9507 is a very very important uh, level, and we could be going all the way to there. Um, I'm you know it it I look at things as they are as opposed to uh, as I would wish them to be. This is uh, the Euro USD, and you can see how we close below these very important levels at uh, 118.40 and 119.08. On the weeklies we have broken, okay, we have the Bollinger Bands here, which are now beginning to expand, but it looks like the path of least resistance now it d is down to this 115.40 area. Um, and even if we draw an, a draw an ABC, we could easily get to these levels around 1, 116 on the dailies without too much problem before we have a bounce back up towards 118, 119. So obviously the timing for a weaker dollar is not now, and I have to respect that and get out of the way, and my macro view at the moment is not the right one, and that's all there is to it. Um, the next place to try is somewhere around here, uh, 116.30, uh, 116.20. Uh, <coughs> that looks like a very good level to try, and that might very well coincide with the level in DXY around that 95 area. Given what I've said about gold, uh, sorry, about the dollar and bonds, you already know what I'm going to say about gold. Uh, I see no merit in owning it uh, whatsoever now. Um, here we have, we've, all we've done basically is corrected sl uh, slowly the uh, oversold conditions in the RSIs and the stochastics. Um, and probably we're ready to make a new uh, move down to, uh, with we're turning all the moving averages on the dailies and slowly on the weeklies. Um, and, you know, we could easily now, uh, over the course of the next few weeks, bust through this uh, 1658 area and go into the 1550s. Um, it all depends on bonds and it all depends on the dollar. But if I'm even remotely right in the direction of the fives, tens and the US dollar, which uh, is, um, I think, now uh, headed a little bit higher, um, then we will most probably see the gold bust this 1658 area and do a final leg down into the 1550s. Um, this is a uh, very good area for accumulation, um, you know, anywhere between 1620 and this moving average around 1560. So this area is going to be a wonderful area for, uh, for longs. If you, you know, technically speaking, A, B, C, A, B, C, um, you know, to this area below 1600, that looks more, uh, more than uh, likely than not and probably where the final end of the
this journey is for the next big leg up. On to equities. And, you know, I, I keep on coming back to the fact that the various indices are at very, very different spots. Here we have the transports making new highs. I mean, this is a beautiful trend channel. And here we have the Dow basically following it. The market is obviously anticipating the infrastructure bill. It's obviously anticipating reopening. It's obviously anticipating very strong growth in the next couple of quarters and is reacting to preempt them. Transports are going up. Industrials are going up. While these trends continue, it's absolutely impossible for the other for the other indices to do anything but high stay stable or improve very slowly with nasty gyrations in between. And this looks like it will continue. If you see what basically what have we done since the beginning of 2021 in the industrials and in the uh, and in, in, in the transports. We've gone up slightly, came back, retested the bottom, boom, straight back up, and we're going to be closing somewhere near the highs of the quarter. Very much the same here in the industrials. Went up slightly, came back, retested, boom, we're going to be closing somewhere around the highs of the quarter. Given that, it's impossible for the other indices to do very much different and we will see in a moment. This is a wonderful chart to be able to see exactly what's been going on this quarter. I've started it on the 1st of January, and this is the sector performance. Energy, 33%, uh, followed by financial, 16%, followed by XLI, industrials, 11%, and then materials. So you can see what's going up. Uh, energy, I think that's probably done 90% of what it's going to do. Uh, financials with the yield curve uh, doing what it's doing, it's quite reasonable that they continue. And XLI and materials, it's quite, quite reasonable that they should continue. XLI might catch up a bit. And XLK, which has been the leader for such a long time, it's up 2% on the quarter. Um, and that is all due to the yield curve. And if higher yields continue, which they are more likely than not, we can see that XL, XLK, XLP, and XLU are likely to remain laggards for next quarter as well. And therefore, we have to look at the uh, at charts like the transports and the industrials to see when and if they are ready to give up and that will be our signal that probably everything is ready to give up. We are nowhere near it at the moment. This is going to last many more weeks and probably the whole of next quarter. Uh, more churning, more slowly, slowly taking up the, uh, the, the reopening sectors uh, and doing very much, not at all, very much with XLY, XLV, XLK, XLP, XLU, and this is like 50% of the index. So if 50% of the index isn't cooperating, um, the upside is not that huge, but also uh, every time things drop, there are buyers. And actually this ties very well this gives us huge opportunities because what it means is that this overall in SPX and NDX is a very technical market. Every time it reaches a support level, it bounces. Uh, you do not chase it. You do not sell it outside of the Bollinger Bands. This is not a panic of any sort. This is a very technical market. You will have noticed that in not once this quarter have I sold it or got bearish when he was at a technical point. It seems to trade very well technically. Uh, and now for next week, what do we have? We have support at 39.50. Uh, every time he gets to that level, it's likely to bounce. Um, and below.
below that we have we can easily put another level around here which is 3911 uh, up to 3915 in SPX very much doubt it breaks that anytime next week to the upside you know it's going to try and test 4000 and uh, we can easily have it actually look at where the weekly Bollinger's are going to come in uh, don't forget they're going to go up a little bit so around 4040 4050 that is where the weekly Bollinger's are going to be and that is where the market is probably going to try and push uh, don't forget Wednesday's quarter end and people want to mark uh, to market uh, their holdings at the highest possible level so the hedge funds can get paid no reason to sell any time between Monday and Wednesday that I can see. Uh, beautiful market, doing nothing wrong technically. Wouldn't it be nice if they settled it at 4,000 or something like that on Wednesday? Everyone gets paid, everyone happy. The market that's going to potentially be interesting next week in the early part is going to be NQ because if the infrastructure bill is the odds of it passing or whatever uh, is not as large as the market might expect and therefore if bonds stabilize and they don't get hit like I expect them to get hit in the 5 to 10 year tenure they are probably going to rally the hell out of NQ and take it up to 13,323 to test that level at least. Um, that's because the market is the market. It, it hates stability and it wants to, you know, it just wants to push people in, at, you know, to get them long at bad levels. That's going to be the only interesting thing. But you can see what NQ is doing. I mean, it's fighting the bonds all the time and it's crawling, it's, you know, crawling along the 200 period on the 195. Uh, and that's all it's doing. It's going to try and get people long above 13,300. Um, that is going to fail and it's going to come back down. I think that's probably the most likely story. Uh, I will not be short of NQ unless I see a really good level. That there is no point. Although NQ to me is going to remain the weakest, there's uh, no point giving up performance for no reason. It's much easier to buy the dip in transports um, rather than uh, just try and be long of NQ. I think that's a losing battle. I, I don't think the, uh, you know, the fives and tens have stabilized. I think, I don't think that they've stabilized. I think the thirties might have stabilized. Um, in which case the pressure will return in waves on thing on technology and, and, and those sectors why why try and uh, uh, you know fight the market the market is saying every time it dips transports and the Dow are better buys than anything else sure there'll be squeezes in NQ uh, but you know apart from a couple of momentum days that's probably all you're gonna get I keep on being impressed by how well Europe in general and Germany in particular are trading. They are right at the top of the weekly Bollinger Bands, but they are, there's almost no give up. And if you think about it, they have everything going for them. Last week, the uh, euro was weaker. The ECB is controlling uh, bond rates uh, much better than Fed, the, uh, the inde index itself is much more industrial in nature rather than, the, uh, rather than in the US and therefore it has the least amount of pressure. In terms of risk rewards, Germany and the UK look to me still better than uh, most other indices. I've switched quite a bit of my exposure to Europe. I still like it. I think the uh, the DAX and the stocks and the FTSE are trading very well in terms of risk reward, and I think the path of, path of least.
Chinese resistance is well high. Certainly, I think Europe looks more bullish than Japan does or than EEM does at the moment. Japan is, uh, I think, stuck in a range between 30,000 and 28,000 for a good long while now, simply because we have to ascertain what the new policy from the BOJ about buying equities is going to be. They keep on saying they're only going to buy them when they dip, um, and also what they're going to do about allowing their uh, bond markets to slowly, slowly move higher in yield if that is the way they wish to move. Um, that is all also part of a uh, slightly weaker story in, uh, in China, uh, and that has not back EEM far more than any other uh, sector, but it's, very, it's doing extremely well in terms of holding 5208 to 5023, which is the area that I wanted. I keep on selling puts in this area. I keep on not getting exercised. Uh, and I will keep on doing it because I think this is a wonderful area, longer term to be long of EEM, while it builds fuel for the next leg up. If we have a look at what the EEM spreads are doing, basically they just mean reverted towards the uh, longer term moving averages, which here it is against Europe, it's up, against Germany, it's up, against Japan, it's neutral. It's still very much down against the US, but my speculation is that at some stage this will turn up as well. I still much prefer EEM to uh, anything else, and I've increased my, uh, my the level of my holdings to above average. And I will naturally increase them more if I get exercise between 52.08 and 50.23. Uh, but that is the area that you want it. Uh, you will most probably get it in the next, I don't know, couple of months. Uh, and um, then you just wait for the next big leg up. wanted to leave you with a word about volatility. Every time we get into the 23s, we get smacked back down below the very important 2005 level, which to me is a trigger. If I enlarge this weekly chart, I think that we are uh, at some stage going to test this 1608 level. Um, but it's getting ready to do another, I mean, getting ready. It's, uh, this is a weekly chart. It's several weeks away, probably six weeks or something like that before we've tested this level, rejected it and moved significantly above 22 again. That to me says that we are more likely than not to have several uh, more weeks of sideways consolidation action, uh, you know, and it, it's unlikely that we drop much below this area around the 16, but that will get people so bullish that we trade in the high teens for like a week or two. Everybody will forget about volatility and that will be another great opportunity to own it. At the moment, the fact that it just can't hold, keep on hold higher than 23 and these moving averages tells me the path of least resistance over the next few weeks is still a little bit lower, but at some stage it'll it'll be our friend again and this ties in with everything that i've uh, said before uh, the the transports the industrials the financials are still leading us higher while they're doing their part it's very hard for the other parts of the um, of the index to do too much damage and therefore the indices just uh, churn around and then do very quick flips upwards like we saw on Friday when the liquidity disappears. Technical market, let's trade it technically for the, certainly the next month. I haven't changed very much here. I still I haven't shown you the two stands, but the level is still 179. I've got uh, my alarm in there. If it gets there, I really want to do some two stands. Um, 
as I said, I'm no longer bearish of the 30s. I'm more bearish of the 5s and 10s until they get to some uh, very important yield levels, which I gave you. Um, DXY, I really, you know, I'm, I, I just can't get bullish of the dollar. I just can't. I think the path of this least resistance in the long term has to be down for very macro reasons. But, you know, I think we are now heading to these levels, 93.14 and 93.63. Only in 93.63 is it worth giving it another shot on the downside. Gold, well, if I'm not bullish the XY, I'm not bullish the 5s and 10s, you know, I, I still think that down to the, into the 1550s to 1600s is going to be the, uh, the sweet spot and where you would want to own it because the move in bonds will be over and the move in DXY will be over. For the time being, I see no reason to be bullish. I've told you exactly what I think. Very technical market from now on in SPX and NQ. 13,312 is the level that they will try to push to get everyone long and probably then puke them. Um, but I think that in the next couple of weeks, 4,000 will be seen and everyone will get very excited. Uh, and um, that's, but it'll be a technical market. They will, you know, if bottling deviations will work very well, the Bollinger Bands will work very well, all the technical indicators will work very well, and that's the way we're going to trade it. Um, EEM. It's a notable laggard, but I've showed you the uh, the spreads. But the fact that it keeps on not breaking and not sustaining 52A to 50.23 tells me that I'm right longer term. Uh, 58, 55.83, I think it's very unlikely to be broken for a while. It needs to build up time to then have a slingshot higher. Thank you very much indeed, and tweet you on Monday.